Hey, welcome to Woodwork for Humans, the series where we make amazing things out of wood using the bare minimum tools. For the last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on this $30 workbench, which is made entirely out of construction lumber, requires no hardware, no vice, and still holds everything that you could need to make great woodworking projects. But now that this bench is done, I've got a problem. It is constantly covered in tools. Because I want to keep my Woodwork for Humans tools separate from the rest of my shop, so I keep them on the bench, but then I've got no place to sit and do my projects. And so I end up moving these tools. And the places that I'm moving them to, well, I haven't been making many friends around the house. So it seems pretty obvious to me, it's time to make a tool tote. To make our tool tote, we're going to use all the same tools we've been using in this series, and you can look down in the description for a complete list of all the basic, affordable tools we've used to make all the woodwork for human projects. But for this video, we're also going to need a square. Now, I plan on making some simple wooden tri-squares in a future video, because they're a great skill-building project, and wooden tri-squares work great, especially for woodworking projects. But in order to just get on with making something, I suggest you grab an inexpensive square so we can get going. You might want to grab this little one off of AliExpress. It is under $3 with free shipping. I did a complete review video on it a couple weeks back. You can click the link and watch that video. But if you don't want to wait for the AliExpress shipping, go ahead down to your local big box store or Harbor Freight and grab a speed square. These are typically used by carpenters and contractors, and they're usually used for things like putting in roof rafters. But they're also perfectly square, accurate, inexpensive, more than good enough for what we're doing, and they only cost a couple of bucks. So grab one of these, and let's make a tool tote. To make my tool tote, I'm going to use this single board of white pine. It's 8 feet long by 12 inches wide. I got it down at the big box store for 15 bucks, and I'm using it because it's standardized and widely available. If you don't have a big box store near you, you just need 8 feet by 12 inches of any wood you can get your hands on. The first thing I'm going to do is cut off the piece of wood from my handle. This is the longest component, so I want to cut it off and set it aside before I start cutting up the rest of the board. You might notice that I'm using a Japanese pole saw here. I did a full review on this saw last week, and you can check that out if you want to see why it's my new favorite saw and why I think it's an incredible value. Now, this tool tote has a lot of features to it. It's got angled side, a bottom that's dadoed in, and feet underneath. And when I'm doing a project like this, and I want it to be done fast and efficiently, I try to get as many features as possible into a single component. So in this build, I'm going to move all of those details into the ends of the tote. This is going to be my most complicated component, so I'm going to do it first and make sure it's right before I move on to the rest. To make my ends, I'll rip and cross cut two pieces of stock. And then, because I'm making two identical components, I'm going to want to stick them together so I can work on them both at the same time. To do that, I'll use a combination of blue painter's tape and super glue. And this is like the world's best double-sided tape, because it holds things together really well, but it lets go when the time comes to peel things apart. With my two end pieces stuck together, I'll plane the edges and the end grain straight and square, and then I'll lay out all the angles, measurements, and curves on the piece in pencil. Now, you might have noticed that this project has a lot more measurements and angles and details than my usual projects, so I've come up with a set of plans. They're available on my website. They're very inexpensive and you can click the link down in the description to check those out. I lay out my curves using random objects from around the shop, but you can also use a compass or a set of trammel points if you have them. And for actually cutting out the curves, I make a series of cross cuts down to my line with my saw, and then I come in with my widest chisel and slowly chisel out that curve by riding the bevel and coming in closer and closer with gentle mallet taps until I have a nice, fair, even curve all the way down this part. Once the chisel work is done, I come in with sandpaper and smooth everything out. Finally, I drill two holes where my handles are going to go, and then I peel my pieces apart, set them aside, and get ready for the next part. Now that we've cut both of the end pieces, it's time to cut this dado right here, which is going to receive the bottom of the tool tote, like this. Now this is the most complicated joint we've cut so far in the Woodwork for Humans series, but it's not a big deal. You want to start by laying out this bottom line using your square, and then to get this top line laid out, you want to use an actual piece of stock. So grab a scrap from the project, put that against your bottom line, and pencil in this top line. 
Next, you need to get the depth of the dado. And to do that, I just took a flat piece of scrap, laid it next to my end, and traced over the top of that. And that gave me an excellent depth line. It can be anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch deep. I don't even know how thick this scrap is. It doesn't matter. Once you've got your joint laid out, clamp a straight piece of scrap wood along the bottom line and then slowly saw down to the bottom at either end and using a fine tooth saw, kind of like a flush cut, you want to just ride against that piece of scrap and slowly work your way down close to the bottom of the joint. Don't overshoot and leave it a little shallow if you have to because we're going to be using a chisel to get our final depth. Once you've got that line sawed, you can go ahead and take your chisel and start removing the waste. Just go slowly and take out pieces at a shallow angle. When the bottom is done, we're going to want to do the actual layout for the top. And for that, we're going to need the bottom of the tote, which we haven't made yet. So take a minute, rip, cross cut, and square a piece of stock for your bottom. And then what you're going to want to do is take your bottom, rest it against that little bottom shelf that you've just made, lean it up so that it touches the top, and then take a chisel and score along the top of that piece of wood. You're trying to make this line as tight as possible. You might even undercut it a little bit because we're looking for a super tight fit here. Once you've got that top line scored, saw it down just like you did the other one, and then pare away the waste with a chisel, but leave it high in the middle. Then take a chisel flat and come in along the joint and take out most of that waste. But don't go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to use a more precise tool for that. To make the joint really flat and perfect on the bottom, we're going to use this. It's called the poor man's hand router. And it's a little router plane that you can make yourself. Take your narrowest chisel and then drill a slightly narrower hole in a piece of scrap wood at an angle, at least 45 degrees, maybe a little bit shallower. And then tap a chisel in with a mallet. And then you're going to have a tool that can ride on either side of the dado while the chisel sticks out and cleans out that very bottom. It's a surprisingly effective tool. I could go into a lot more detail about how to make this, but instead I'm going to link to Paul Seller's video where he goes over everything you need to know about making this really quickly and using it well. Paul explains it better than I could anyway, so just go watch his video. It's short. When your joint is totally cleaned out with the router plane, go ahead and try to fit the bottom in. It's probably going to be just a tiny bit too tight, and that's actually a good thing. Take your plane and take one fine shaving off the edge of your bottom piece. And once you've done that, your bottom should pop right in. Although it's still going to be a pretty snug fit, that's exactly what you're looking for. You can repeat that process with the other end, and then we can move on to the sides and the handle. To make my handle, I'm going to take the long piece of stock that I cut early in the video and drill a three-quarter inch hole at either end. This is mostly an aesthetic detail and it'll make a lot more sense once the whole thing is together. But then I'm going to take my fine cut saw and cut out the waste on either end of that hole and that's going to leave me with stock that I can cut and trim into a pair of three-quarter inch round tenons. And these are going to fit into the three-quarter inch holes I drilled at the top of my end pieces. This is the same round wedged joint that we've used in a bunch of Woodwork for Humans videos. So if you'd like more information on the specifics, check out the three-tool bench build or the $30 workbench. And that'll teach you all about this simple and strong joint. The way the handle is now, it's much too thick to get a good grip on. So I'm going to lay out and cut a wide, shallow curve. That's going to allow the handle to still be strong, but be thin enough to actually grip and carry around. I'm going to cut the same curve into my side pieces. And cutting that curve out is going to allow the whole tote to be very deep, but still allow easy access to everything inside. Now that I have all my major components made, it's a good idea to glue up this whole structure and let it dry before I finish the whole thing off. So to get ready for glue up, I'm going to set my plane for its lightest setting and do a very fine smoothing pass over all of my parts. And that's going to take off all the pencil marks, dirt, dings, and damage that this white pine has picked up during the fabrication process. I'm also going to take a second and lay out some curves and cut them out on the bottoms of my ends, and that's going to leave me with three feet. Having feet on a tool tote is a really good idea because you're going to be carrying it to a bunch of different locations and you might have to set it down in places that are dirty or wet. And having feet instead of a flat bottom really limits the amount of junk the bottom of this thing is going to pick up. I'm also doing three feet instead of four because that's going to make it like a tripod. It'll be self-leveling and even when I set it down on uneven ground, it's not going to wobble. This is a little detail, but it's worth taking the time to put it in. Now that all of my major components are done, I'll put glue in my dados glue around my handle tenons, cut and split wedges, pound those in, 
add a couple of clamps, and then leave the whole structure to dry for a couple of hours while I finish making my sides. Okay, so after the piece has had a couple of hours in the clamps, the glue is set enough to keep working on it. So here it is, I've got the basic structure worked out. I can already feel how strong it's gonna be and it's super lightweight, so I'm excited so far. I just have to get these sides on here and then everything's gonna be fine. But the sides do present a bit of a problem. The sides, they're gonna have to run this way with the grain. But then I have the ends, and the grain on the ends runs in the opposite direction. Now, if you know anything about wood movement, you know that wood expands across the grain. It doesn't really grow lengthwise. So these pieces on the ends over here, they're not going to be expanding and contracting with the weather, but the sides are going to expand and contract with the weather a lot. So if I take the sides and just glue them on right here, as soon as I get a big change in temperature humidity, they're just going to pop right off again. Which is why, when you look at old tool totes, you see the sides most often are nailed or screwed on. And that's a completely valid way to do it. If you have that stuff around, go ahead and use nails or screws. Now at the same time, maybe you don't have that stuff, or you just want an all wood look for your tote. And that's what I'm going for here, so I don't want to use hardware. Instead, I'm going to put these sides on with wooden pegs, which you can make really easily. I'm going to use half inch pegs, and they're very, very easy to make. If you've already made these round wedged tenon, then you have all the skill you need to just carve a round tenon that's a half inch in diameter, and they only have to be about an inch or an inch and a half long. So it's not very hard to crank out a few of those. The other thing that you can do if you have some drilling capability and a little scrap metal around is you can take a piece of plain old mild steel, nothing super special, and drill a half inch hole in it. And then you can clamp that down with an open space underneath it, take a piece of half inch square stock, knock off the corners, sort of sharpen the end a little bit like a pencil, and then just pound it through that hole. And the hole in the mild steel will just form that into a peg. And you could probably do a six or eight inch length of that and then easily just saw it up into the pegs that you need. So either approach is gonna get you the pegs you need pretty quickly. And then for actually gluing this on, I'm gonna have most of the glue on the pegs themselves and just a little bit on the ends here so that the seasonal movement isn't going to affect these sides. Now you're going to notice as I'm putting these sides on that they overhang a lot on one end and that was totally intentional. I wasn't 100% sure of the length I was going to end up with and it's always possible your ends might not be 100% square to the bottom. That's not really a problem with these overlapping sides. If they're laying over a little bit you can just take your Japanese saw and go along and flush cut those sides and then follow up with the plane or some sandpaper and they're going to come out perfect no matter what. Once the glue dries on your pegs, you can flush cut them and then either sand or plane the last little details off the box. And then you're done. And here's the finished product. And I have to be honest, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. It's got a nice, clean, sturdy look and some good details. Now you might be wondering, how does this thing hold tools? Well, really well, actually. I can fit all of the Woodwork for Humans tools into it, and I've got room to spare, which is good, because I can tell from doing this project that we're not done with our tool collection yet. There's definitely more stuff we're going to need to make really great woodworking projects. Now, I should mention that I did spend a little time detailing the piece. I trimmed these tenons into something that I thought looked nice. You don't have to do this. You can just flush cut them if you want to, but you can see how that little three-quarter inch hole I drilled just creates kind of a detail there where the handle meets the end. I like that. I also did a lot of chamfering and shaping around the edges. This white pine is pretty soft and you don't want any sharp corners. They're going to get dinged or damaged really easily. I also strongly recommend finishing this. I'm going to put on at least two coats of polyurethane in the days ahead and that's going to keep it looking clean and make it much more durable for the years to come. Now, if you want to make your own tool tote, I have plans available. They're at rexkruger.com store, or you can click the link down in the description. One of the reasons I'm offering these plans is I often have viewers tell me that they'd like to support the channel a little bit, but they're not ready to take the plunge into Patreon. And that's totally fine with me. Here's a one-time way you can throw the channel a little bit of support and get something. A nice, complete set of plans that should be easy for you to work from. And speaking of my patrons, I should mention that all of my current patrons got these plans for free this morning. And there are going to be more rewards like that, as I'm always trying to make being my patron as fun and interesting as possible.
So if you're interested in some of those rewards, go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out the early access and other things that I have available just for my patrons. And before I go, I want to say one more thing about this tote. Mine came out good, but it's hardly perfect. There are lots of little things that bother me a little bit. I mean, there's tear out from using this very simple, not fantastic hand plane. There's little spots where I chipped it. There's spots where I ran the saw a little bit further past the line than I wanted to. There's all sorts of little details that I don't love about this tool tote. And the experience of making it taught me something really important. I've been woodworking for a long time, and I've even made some fancy, expensive client pieces. But even though I love hand tools and use them a lot, I rarely do a project using only hand tools. And really, when you take all the machines away, it's a different world. There's a lot more burden on you to be precise and accurate and get things to fit together and achieve a good finish without a machine to do some of the work for you. So if this is your first project that you're doing with all hand tools, or your first woodworking project, period, Take it easy on yourself. I've been doing woodwork for a long time, and this still could have come out a little better. I might make another one in the future, try to get it a little crisper, a little nicer looking. Anyway, if I do, you know I'll document it right here. So come on back next week and see what else I'm doing on the Woodworking for Humans series. Thanks a bunch.